The Windows laptop market is about to get a lot more interesting because Qualcomm is launching two new platforms, the X Elite and X Plus. And no, these aren't supposed to be lower end processors like their previous generations. They're actually meant to take on and even beat CPUs from Intel, AMD, and even Apple. So let's get into what we know about these things and what we don't. So first off, these chips are engineered with a strong focus on CPU performance as well as AI computation with the built-in NPU, which is supposed to take a lot of the workload from the CPU to improve efficiency. Now, I should also highlight that this platform runs Windows on ARM, not x86. Initially, app compatibility would largely rely on emulation, but Qualcomm is actually collaborating with developers uh, to integrate native support for uh, popular everyday apps, including enterprise solutions. It's also important to note that this isn't intended to compete directly with x86. In fact, Qualcomm and Microsoft are positioning it as a compelling alternative to Apple's ARM-based ecosystem. Their target audience seems to be MacBook Air users. It might not yet be suitable for the prosumer market due to the lack of a capable discrete GPU. So we have two platforms, X Elite positioned as the flagship offering and X Plus, its counterpart with slightly scaled down specs. X Elite boasts 12 Orion high performance cores capable of reaching boost clocks of up to 3.8 gigahertz across all cores. Additionally, with the innovative dual boost technology, two of these high performance cores can surge to an impressive 4.2 gigahertz under certain conditions, and you get a substantial amount of cache as well, 42 megabytes to be precise. Um, they also feature 45 tops for the NPU and a memory bandwidth of 136 gigabytes per second. Now keep in mind that this is a theoretical throughput, so it likely won't translate to raw performance. On the other hand, the X Plus serves as the little brother to the X Elite, offering 10 high performance cores and marginally lower clock speeds. But aside from these differences, the majority of the features and capabilities from the X Elite platform are seamlessly carried over to X Plus, uh, ensuring a somewhat consistent performance package across both variants. And it should also affect uh, the pricing structure as well, because X Plus most likely would be a lot more cheaper than Excellent. But before we dive any further, a quick word from today's video sponsor. Question, why is it so cold in here? Well, I got new coolers installed. Turns out they're a little too good. They're meant for computers, you know that, right? I got them in every room. Hey, <laughs> the price is just too good. I guess the large VRM fans help with cooling. Yeah. Plus the pivoting connection hoses are wonderful. I do love the styles and different sizes too. The new Arctic Freezer 3 AIOs. Please use on CPUs only. They are specifically optimized for LGA 1700 and AM54. <laughs> Check them out below. All right, have fun with your freezer. <laughs> Now, what kind of performance can we expect against the competition? Well, full disclosure, the numbers that I'm about to show you have been provided to us from Qualcomm. So I would take them with a truckload of salt since they're run in a perfect situation on a laptop with programs that Qualcomm's obviously fully optimized for. But that being said, it does look very promising. They're claiming that it's 28% faster than Apple's M3 offering and up to 52% faster multi-core performance than Intel's Core Ultra 7 155H CPU. The most interesting part is that it supposedly achieves all of this performance while consuming 60% less power. You can also see how it plays out against AMD's Ryzen 9 7940HS CPU. Keep in mind that this is a Geekbench run, which doesn't really paint the whole picture of what these chips are capable of. Now, Qualcomm did give us the liberty to conduct our own tests uh, in their reference designs, albeit with <laughs> a limited time frame. So it's important to note that these aren't the final products that you'll see on shelves later this year. They're just merely prototypes designed to provide a quick glimpse of potential performance compared to what's already out there in the market. So I didn't bring my full suit of tests from the office uh, since it just wouldn't be fair to judge these unfinished versions. But I was eager to just see how these chips would be performing uh, both plugged in and on battery. And surprisingly, the results were quite impressive. The X Elite was able to pull off a substantial lead over Intel's 155H on the Yoga Pro 7i, the Ryzen 7 8845HS on the Yoga Pro 7, and Apple's M3 processor on the MacBook Air 13 that we have in hand right now. Remember, this could very well be application dependent and we have a ton more testing to do when these eventually become available to the end user. So definitely stay tuned for our coverage later this year. But honestly, guys, I just can't wait to get my hands on these chips. They also were pretty confident in the overall responsiveness of this platform when it comes to everyday productivity focused 
tasks. Things like launching Adobe Lightroom, Photoshop, Spotify, Microsoft Teams, and the most apps that you know you and I use every day are up to 70% faster than Intel. I'm surprised they didn't include AMD and Apple Silicon results, but yeah, this is something that I'm also curious to test out. Qualcomm also mentioned that you can expect significant battery life improvements with this new platform. Now, this shouldn't be surprising since Windows on ARM has been around for almost seven years and we are aware of their efficiencies. The performance stuff wasn't quite there, but in this case, they're actually claiming that you can expect up to twice the battery life compared to laptops equipped with Intel's Core Ultra 7 CPU. That being said, I'm somewhat skeptical about this claim because if you look closely at their footnotes, it reveals that they're comparing it to uh, the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED with a 75 watt hour battery, but they weren't clear about the battery capacities of the reference models displayed. It's also important to remember that these numbers could change substantially by the time the final products are released. Uh, for example, if Asus launches a ZenBook 14 OLED with an X Elite CPU, it might be worth revisiting this topic, but for now, they've certainly sparked the curiosity in me. Now, performance and power efficiencies aren't the only highlights of these processors. They actually have included some exciting quality of life enhancements. For example, uh, they feature a built-in dual 18-bit image signal processor that in conjunction with a shift from USB to MIPI for the webcam, promises significantly improved image quality with better dynamic range and just more pleasing visuals overall. Because let's face it, Front-facing cameras on smartphones are way superior compared to the ones that are on laptops. There's just no competition. So it's really refreshing to see Qualcomm applying its successful approach to the laptop market, which could greatly benefit users who depended high quality video for online meetings. But guys, I also have to mention that none of this would matter if OEM manufacturers choose to exclude this feature into their final designs. Even though the chip is capable, it would be a wasted opportunity if it's not properly integrated. You also get support for Wi-Fi 7, 5G, lossless audio, uh, AV1 decoding and encoding uh, support, which is pretty big for creators. And on the iOS side of things, this platform can support up to three USB 4 ports. Now the transfer speeds aren't confirmed yet, but they did mention that it can run up to three 4K displays at 60 Hertz, which is pretty cool. Pretty sure Apple can learn a thing or two from their M3 processors on the MacBook Air. Just saying. Now, as for the NPU, I know it's probably really boring for most of you guys, but there are some really interesting real world applications that I personally see myself using and they showcased it at the briefing. For instance, if you're a novice venturing into music production, these processors have the ability to generate sound samples through apps like Audacity. Simply input the type of instrument, whether if it's woodwind, brass, percussion, or strings, and just let the NPU work its magic for a few seconds. Now, while this feature is still in beta phase, it holds a significant potential for music creation. For those who are programmers, the NPU aids in generating comments within VS Code for quick analysis. This could be a valuable tool for developers utilizing uh, this particular application, but that can also expand once there's more uh, maturity with this platform. They demonstrated examples with stable diffusion as well, showcasing AI algorithms that generate images based on user input. For instance, I requested an image of a monkey drinking a cup of coffee, and while it came close to depicting the scene accurately, it did forget to include the coffee in the cup. But anyways, some pretty fun stuff to play with. You also get voice to text generation capabilities where the NPU processes audio input from the microphones and converts it into real time text. This could be useful for generating subtitles in real time during, let's say a live streaming session or meetings, enhancing accessibility for engagement viewers. Now for DaVinci Resolve users, the NPU now works with Magic Mask. Now this is a feature that basically automatically detects subjects in footage and it enables real-time tracking during color grading. I'm pretty sure this feature can significantly speed up the workflow for video editors like myself. Now gaming performance on these reference models was somewhat uncertain. They had a few demos such as Control and uh, Redout 2, but these were actually running on emulation layers, not natively. And remember, these are running off of the integrated Arduino GPU, so it's not really meant to compete with discrete offerings from NVIDIA and AMD. I did ask them about the performance impact of using an emulation wrapper, and although they are working on improvements, they assured to me that for the most part, the emulation is barely noticeable. Uh, but having just spent a few minutes with it, from my experience, I'd say the games are playable, but I wouldn't describe them as sort of like, a groundbreaking experience. 
I mean, look, there's still a lot more questions that still need to be answered. Things like graphics driver updates. I mean, in order to stay competitive, they have to be on top of things. I'm not sure what that's gonna look like. I mean, look at the disaster Intel dealt with when they launched Arc. I just hope history doesn't repeat itself. I was also curious about the minimum and maximum wattages for the X Elite and X Plus CPUs. And they mentioned that supposedly these chips can be dynamically scaled based on the thermal profiles of the final device. So you can expect anywhere between 10 to 80 watts. So theoretically, there could be a possibility for a passive cool laptop like the MacBook Air or a gaming beast, kind of like the Razer Blade 16. It's all up at the air at this point. I know I'm probably speculating right now, but imagine having an X Elite CPU with an NVIDIA RTX 4060, 4070, or 48 graphics card. I mean, that combination, not sure if it's ever gonna happen, but I'm just saying, if Qualcomm and NVIDIA can work together, could mean big things. But I don't know if Intel's gonna be happy about that. I think I'm going off topic, but anyways, guys, that wraps up what I've seen so far. And I mean, look, these CPUs uh, from Qualcomm certainly seem promising. Given their dominance in the smartphone market through superior performance and efficiency, it was only a matter of time for them to expand into laptops. With years of research and development to back them up, I think Qualcomm's move into the space could shake things up. If the performance they showcased is really true among the majority of apps that you and I use on a daily basis, this could very well lead to a new era of Windows laptops. But what do you guys think? Are you excited about the potential for more competition in the laptop market? Should Intel, AMD, and Apple be concerned? Let us know in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys 